Hi, my name is Anika Majaria and you're watching Dubai Live TV. I am at the American Hospital with Dr. Stephen Griffin, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon. Hi, Dr. Stephen, how are you doing today? Good morning. Could you please talk to me a little bit about your speciality? Yes, I, I'm a surgeon. People often mix us up with cardiologists and cardiac surgeons. We're the, the heart surgeons who do the operate on the heart and the lung, and that's a cardiac and, cardi and thoracic surgery. And we look after any diseases of the heart and the lung that require surgery. Obviously, there are many diseases do not require surgery. Tablets or angioplasty or various other things are quite good enough. But basically, any adults who require heart or lung surgery. What types of diseases and illnesses does a cardiothoracic surgeon typically come across? In the adult population, I guess the most common uh, diseases that we operate on are abnormalities of people's heart valves and people, and people who need bypass surgery. Uh, as you may know, bypass surgery is the most widely performed major operation in the whole of the Western world. And in terms of the lung surgery, it's mainly lung cancer, uh, which is obviously related to smoking. And then we do some various other things um, with regards to infections and the like. So a broad, a broad practice here at this hospital. What about cancer in the region? Do you think it's on the rise? Yes, I mean, uh, can all cancers are on the rise because cancer is related to people getting older. But there is, uh, the smoking legislation here is in its infancy. Here, I think the number of people who smoke is probably staying roughly level, and we do see quite a lot of lung cancer here. Also, we have quite a lot of health tourism, particularly from Russia, and uh, smoking is very common there, and so we see quite a lot of patients here who come with lung cancer from, from out, outside the country. Could you talk to me a little bit more in depth about some of the surgeries that you, that you take part in? Or? Our average operations probably last about three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, they can sometimes last longer if, uh, if they're particularly challenging. Um, the, the kind of things we operate on, we come to work in the morning, we, you know, the patient takes a while to go to sleep and have all the various monitoring lines put in. And the actual, uh, once you've connected someone to the heart-lung machine, the, the actual heart section of the operation often takes about an hour, an hour and a half. And then there's the usual closing up and stabilizing the patient afterwards. We can do two operations a day. We tend not to, we tend to just do one. And we have a very strong team here because it's not just a surgeon. Right. Yeah, the surgeon is a small part of the whole procedure. It's about having a good team, a good anaesthetist, good nurses, good intensivists, good physiotherapists, everybody else. And my little bit is just a small bit in the middle, and then, but the overall care of the patient is, it requires lots of people, a huge team. Are there any stories that have occurred within your career that you wish to share or that you think would be quite nice to talk about? Lovely, many, many. I've been a heart surgeon for 30 years. I've been a doctor for 35 years. So, uh, I, as you can imagine, I've come across some uh, amazing stories, amazing um, things. I'm, I'm thinking of one that comes to light that we've done here in, in Dubai, which was a wonderful story. We had a, a young woman who came to us uh, very, very poorly. She was in intensive care and uh, she, was ha she had heart failure and she was really dying of uh, rheumatic heart disease. One of her heart valves was narrowed and that itself was bad enough, but the complicating uh, fact was that she was six months pregnant at the time. So eventually we decided to take her to the operating room and we replaced her valve. Uh, we were all ready to deliver her baby if things had happened during the operation, but the baby seemed absolutely fine. She recovered from the surgery very, very quickly. She's a fit young woman. Um, and then um, a few months later, she came back to the operating room and we did a C-section, a, a cesarean section, and uh, we delivered a beautiful baby girl. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I think that in my life that was the uh, best thing I've ever done in, and I was really quite moved as was everybody else when we delivered this little baby. Yeah, I mean, I've seen all sorts of things over the years, but that one, uh, that one I'll tell my grandchildren about. What are the biggest challenges that you face within your field? Yeah, I mean, there's the technical challenges of just doing the operation uh, and that's something which I hope I overcame a long time ago, but you never know, if you, you can never be perfect. There's the administrative challenges of making sure you've got all the right people in the right place at the right time, because as I said earlier, it's a team operation and to get everything in place at any one time. Uh, other than that, we have, we're very well equipped here. We have good things. Blood, uh, availability of blood is always a problem uh, because uh, although there's a very good blood, blood donation program here. Right, I agree. Thank you so much, Dr. Stephen, for your time. I really appreciate that. My pleasure. Nice to meet you.